Okay, so the very first thing we have to learn with any system that we basically start is how to navigate that system. Um, in other words, in other words, what's this layout and what does all this stuff mean? SharePoint's no exception. We need to go through the layout. Now, what we're going to like, what I like about this though, is that this is a very intuitive sort of layout. So this is extremely intuitive in the sense that with this particular layout, you can you can look at it essentially, and really, once you start using it, you'll get you'll basically be able to find your way around quite quickly. So what I want to do over here is I want to start out and just talk about a few things right off the bat. First, when you start in SharePoint, notice that this is best practice design to the tilt as far as on, as far as on the web usability guidelines for the time. Um, the most important, your most important little section or whatever else, this site actions over here as we call it, um, this is going to be very important because this little menu allows us to essentially do everything we need to do. See, now your web interface is actually, now your web interface is an application interface. So we have all these beginning little options over here that mean something, but site actions is the big one of them all. Site actions allows us to go in and do things like, for example, edit a page, as you guys will see later. We can create what are called workspaces, which essentially allow us to actually sync SharePoint back to a copy of the SharePoint data on our actual local computer so that we don't always have to be connected online. We can create new web pages to be able to share information. We've got what are called document libraries. So what these are, guys, are these are going to be tabular forms of data that actually appear in a browser. And you'll see that table data that appears in a browser. Boom. Except for that, this ten, except for that these libraries tend to specialize in a particular form of data and have all kinds of functionality related to that data, as we'll see. We've got sites. You see, one of the things over here is, is if we're using H, um, HTTP as our primary sharing mechanism, then wouldn't it make sense to be able to essentially create websites? And yes, you can. You can create websites galore. In fact, many websites. You've even got more options over here where you can create certain types of things. You can look at um, where you can create more things. So essentially what this does is this gives you flexibility to basically tap in all of Microsoft's templates and start getting busy. You've got view all site content right over here. So you can see all the content essentially within a particular site. Very, very handy as you guys will begin to see why as we begin to progress through this interview. Or not through this interview, I'm sorry, through this series. But, uh, finally, you've got SharePoint Designer where you can actually go in SharePoint Designer and actually edit things and change things up. You've got permissions that you can actually use such as being able to set site permissions and doing things like that. Very, very important because one of the key things with the CMS system is you want to control who can look at what. That's really important to do. And then you've got site settings right over here. So this is going to allow you now to go into your site and be able to set all sorts of settings for a site. Like, for example, maybe you want to enable some more functionality for a site. Maybe some beautiful type photo gallery or something. You could do that over there. Or maybe you want to enable certain types of permissions or certain types of things built into SharePoint. One critical thing you'll learn within SharePoint as you work with it is that everything should not be enabled on every single site. That causes performance issues. Instead, you want to enable the things that you actually need when you need them. That's much better. So you start with site actions over here, which is very important once you hit over there. And then notice over here that once you finish with site actions, you've got over here what's called, you've got over here what's called the top navigation. Now this is very, very common, right? Your top link bar, so to speak, or whatever else, top navigation. This is navigation that, that, should, that should essentially usually stay the same across multiple different sites. Or at least sort of, or at least sort of point towards some kind of global type option where I can always find this, 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 and you guys will see later on how that'll actually expand through some of my um, future tutorials. Now on the left, you've got what's called a quick launch bar, right? Your quick launch menu, right over here. Um, this is this is where you're going to typically host the most important links for your particular site. So you guys can see over here, these are important links that get you to places and that do certain things in SharePoint. Very, very important. Then Watch this. As you begin to click on certain things, like say I click page over here, so I click page, and then when I come to page, a new menu comes up. You guys can all see this new menu starting to come up over here. Here I'm on edit, check out, edit properties, but there's a new menu. What that new menu is, is that's known as a context sensitive menu, which, which, which what that means is that what we're doing is we're displaying menus whenever someone moves their mouse over a certain point or clicks on a certain, a certain point. Now, why do we do that? Because literally there are thousands of options within SharePoint. So what you typically do is you end up saying, I want to use, I, want, I only want this menu to display in the context that it's needed. That way we don't have pages that are full of just all menus only. Only display this menu 
whenever my mouse moves over here. That's known as in context or context sensitive. Over here, you can actually see the account that's being used. Right now, I'm using the system account. No, that's not a good practice, but I'm using it right now. Um, you want to use some other account, obviously, because that's a very important account. But system account right over here, I can see the account. And look at this. I've even got the per ability to see things like profile settings, things that relate to just my account. Personalization is a big deal in a CMS system, by the way. Big, big part of it, definitely. How can you allow users to be able to personalize content according to their needs, so to speak? so that finance department only sees finance data. Multiple ways to do that, but personaliz personalization is a great way to be able to target an audience, so to speak. Then, if you guys notice over here, we've got some other little, little neat things. Like, for example, let me just click on Share Documents. And I click on it. And it gets ready to come through. There we go. I, had, I clicked on it the first time, but it didn't go through my virtual machine. Now I click on it works. Okay, there's shared documents. Now my link has changed. I've gone to this thing called shared documents. All right. Now let's say that I want to get back to the home page again. Okay, I could just click over here. This is known as breadcrumb navigation, so to speak. Or what I could do is there's something known as the breadcrumb pop-up navigator right here. If I click on this, I can always navigate back to wherever I want to go right over there. So this little folder right over here. And I click Team Site and I'm back very very handy to have the breadcrumb pop-up navigator or navigate or breadcrumbs by the way for those of you who are brand new breadcrumbs um, a central central concept in web usability the idea is that breadcrumbs always allow you to get back to where you were see you can get lost on a site in hierarchies or levels by by clicking through multiple different things and you get so deep to where you don't know where you're at for example I click on this site then subsite 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 ouch that's bad well, that's actually not bad. It's very common. Um, but sometimes you want to get back to, you know, you want to get back to your home page. Like when I click over here, I just clicked on Team Discussions. I need to get back to my home page. Well, one of the easiest way to be able to find your way through there, by the way, is to come up to the breadcrumb pop-up navigator in this folder and just come back and click on the very first link. That's usually the home page. So very, very handy because it just follows stepwise and whatever else, and you can always find your way. Now, the other cool thing that happens is, you see, you got to have rules in a content management system about how to actually access content and also you got to have certain kinds of rules about you know when content can be deleted or whatever and then another rule you need to have that's very important that a lot of people don't think about is how to go back and get content that may have been deleted that happens well here you've got a recycle bin what the recycle bin will do guys is is by default when someone accidentally deletes something that's stored or whatever it'll store it for 30 days where they can go back and retrieve it then after that it gets stored for an additional 30 days where someone who's over them, like a boss or something, can go back and retrieve it too. You can change that. You can change the settings quite easily, actually. But you get the point. you got 60 days where you can go back and get anything that's deleted. Very, very handy in SharePoint 2010. So you've got all of that out over there, right? And let's begin to go a little bit further now. So you've looked at, you've looked at all of this so far and whatever else, and we're starting to see all this together, and we're starting to see navigation. Um, and we're starting to see that really this is pretty nice because it gives us this friendly sort of, it gives us this friendly sort of, um, this friendly user friendly sort of design. You've got one more thing here to, uh, that I want to show you. You've got what's known as you've got what's known as web parts. Now let me show you this just for a second. When I move this over here, everyone notice or, or, or who's ever noticing, notice the little down arrow over here that I just clicked that says edit web part or whatever else, share documents, you name it. These are sections of a page, web part zone, so to speak, where I can actually customize what goes inside of them. So suddenly, if I want to add a little menu there, I can add a menu. If I want to add a big picture, I can add a picture. If I want a picture that's going to be sliding and showing bunches of pictures, I can add it right over there. And web parts are the things that we add inside of them. Now, web parts do everything. Let me explain. They don't just do pictures or display things or whatever. Web parts can do programmatic functionality, too, like... Someone types in some stuff, and then it takes it and passes it over to a report that actually displays. That's extremely common in SharePoint. Um, so very, very powerful concept over here. Consequentially, consequentially or consequentially, consequentially, whatever, bleh, sorry. Um, I'll say this. Web parts are a big area of development. A lot of people will develop custom web parts that do everything underneath the sun because web parts are very, very powerful, and they allow SharePoint to be customized extensively. So we've got, we've got web parts over there. Now, 
that's going to end this particular lecture on navigation, but that starts us out with, with, with SharePoint, essentially, where we actually see it and how to navigate through SharePoint. SharePoint. So we saw web parts. We saw the quick launch bar. We saw the recycle bin, all site content. We saw how that we saw that also. We saw site actions as being our most important part of the of the beginning navigation because it gets us everywhere. We saw how not to get lost with Breadcrumb Navigator. We saw how to change and how to actually look at an account and how to see your login. And you guys notice there's a sign in as a different user. Sometimes you will need to sign in as a different user. And of course, how to actually customize areas of a page by looking at web parts, for example, or customize functions very, very important. So that covers part one. I'll come back now and we'll start part two next.